Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial how to model this toaster in Shaper 3D. In this process video, I will show you how I will start by first exploring the overall volume with some basic studies like extrusion, extrusion with taper, and then how I rebuild everything with splines. And then I will show you an interesting technique how we can also rebuild drafted sites, however, with an arc on it and make this beautifully and consistent all along it. And then we will also go into how to build individual interface elements. As you can see here, they have even a material thickness. As always, the video will be filled with a lot of sketching and modeling tips and tricks. The source file for this is shared. So if you want, please feel free to download it so you could study and follow along this video. And with all this said, let's get going. So here we are inside a new file. First thing, we would like to make sure that the scene is set to centimeters and then our snapping system is turned on. The toaster has a width of 30 centimeters and a depth of 20. So we can go to sketch, go to rectangle. I will select the center rectangle and then start from the center sketching out 30 by 20 centimeters. Like this, perfect. I also will design this horizontally or left to right because this will fit better onto the iPad screen or display screen, whatever you work on. Very nice. So this is now a rectangle. Obviously, um, this does not have any roundings on it, but before I really spend time on all these intricate details, I want to make sure if the basic proportions are good, the volume I'm talking about. So I will extrude this up by 20 centimeters. So I selected the sketch profile and dragged up the extrusion arrow. Very nice. So this now I can rotate around and take a look how this feels. For those who are not familiar with industrial design or just modeling in general, what I'm showing you here is also a common process what we do in design. We work with foam and we try to rebuild scale models or two scale models out of basic building blocks. And then we start adding details. You can see that I selected all four vertical edges and I will give those a rounding or a fillet of 10. 10 because the width is 20, half of that is 10. And as you can see, when each edge is rounded by 10, we end up left and right perfectly with tangent arcs. So that was quite nice. However, what I would like to do is this top face not be exactly the same as the base. So I need to modify the basic first sketch. So we can say this study is kind of good. This is nice. Now I can refine actually the sketch just a little bit. I'll go back to the top view. There we are. Go to sketch. And there are obviously many different ways how to do this. I, in this case, will work with the circle. And from the X line, I will draw a circle up, as you can see. So it touches the top and bottom edge, and then I will move the circle to the right. So it touches the left edge. Because I'm working on the grid and with even units, I know this all perfectly matches. So now, as you see, I select a trim and removed 50% of that circle. Now I have this arc sketched in there. Let's do this one more time. There we are. Oh, look at that. Perfectly positioned there. Very nice. So now, because I still have my basic rectangle for the oval proportion, and I added these two um, arcs in there, I can select the inside face or sketch profile and extrude this up by 20 centimeters and I can give this a nice draft angle 
let's say 5%, uh, 5 degrees, sorry. And the draft angle is really nice because as you can see, when I go to a side view or a front view, the angle of the surface is exactly the same. This looks really nice, good. However, what I would like to do and be able is to have the site more arced. It should not be as linear, okay. So we can say that this overall design is nice, this looks good. What's actually the distance here when I select these two edges, this is 16.5 centimeters. I'm going to delete this one more time. That's the nice thing working digitally. With foam in real life, if you remove something, it's gone. We can glue it back, but essentially it's gone. And digitally, in the digital world, we can always add, cut, go back, undo. It's just a beautiful work environment. From the right view, as you can see, on the bottom, you see my horizontal sketch I created first. Maybe as a height helper, on the far right side, I just draw a vertical line, 20 centimeters. So now I can see along the grid where we are. Also, you might see because I drew this line, I see now the snap points, the intersection points of this vertical sketch plane with the sketch on the ground. So this is going to be useful for various steps. First, down here, I can draw a line. This is right at this midpoint. This is important and I will lock this line. And this line starts right at the bottom on the y-axis. And up here, I draw a line 20 centimeters. Or if I play with the grid a little bit more, 16 centimeters. So you see, this is kind of like where we were. This was roughly a five degree angle, this line I drew. No, between this point to here, I would like to have an arc. And this line, which I drew 16 uh, centimeters, I lock, this is a reference line, and now I can draw that arc. We can go with the automatic or the dedicated arc tool. There we are, I drew this this way, and then I push this down, there we are. And now here is an important trick. This arc to this line, I will make tangent. Now because the these two lines I drew, they have the points locked, they don't move. And this arc now flows tangent into this line. This line here we can keep or delete, it's up to you. This is a reference line. I will remove this because essentially I know that this line is at 20 centimeters height. So what can we do with this line actually? Or I should actually better have set an arc. I will draw a line horizontally on top, then I will draw a line straight down and at the bottom make another horizontal line and connect this. See, now I have a complete sketch and I can use this to sweep this along this set of edges. But as you see, it does not 100% work. Um, the main reason why is this is a really long line and here is the arc uh, and the software needs to understand how from the line to go to that arc. So that's easy. We like actually the shape we have. So we use the trim command and remove everything. There, beautiful. Now I can select all this and do a nice sweep. Perfect. So this is actually now going to be a cut tool. I will show the object lister, hide this, go back to my original horizontal sketch, and this I will drag up by 20 centimeters. There, okay. There's the piece. And then 
I can select my toast remain body, which has straight walls, and then select this body 01, which is the swept geometry. And because I selected two objects, the toolbar tells me that I can subtract the outer piece from the inside. I might have to also change this to none. I do not want any result to be or copies left over. So you see this is beautifully carved. Click done. Look at this. So this is kind of like a, it's not like a draft because a draft is actually linear. This is more an, a nicely curved site. Really nice. Okay. This also looks actually really good. So we would like to refine this one more time. Now we we explored everything. This all looks pretty good. The piece I would like to improve in this design, however, is how from this flat part we make a transition into this arced surface. Because right here at this line we will have a hard transition because this is a we look from here, a flat surface that instantly makes a transition into this beautifully art surface. Okay, but it's not that our work was for nothing. So this piece I will delete. I will rename actually the sketches. I will call this initial ground profile. And this I will call site profile. Okay, very good. Now, this initial ground profile, I will move down. I'll go to minus four centimeters. So it's nicely away from everything. And then when I go to the top view, you can see this and I'll check out what happens the moment I start drawing somewhere a new sketch. You see how the ground sketch we saw, so the initial ground profile is not thin. And I see everything um, else kind of like hidden, or not hidden, sorry, that was the wrong term, um, in a thin profile. So this tells you that this is not on the plane we are working on. And we will take a look at the sp um, spline command. We can work with the CV curve. Again, also because we work on a grid and everything is nicely laid out. So the initial square we drew right from the center point. I can start drafting kind of like over the original sketch I have on the bottom and then use the grid as a helper to line everything up. There we are. Okay, this a little bit further, these two a little bit further, there we are. One more, this back, and then it's a little bit of counting your, your cubes or your grid elements. So this actually looks maybe not too bad, but as you can see, it's difficult to get into these corners and here the spline starts to bend way too fast. So instead of having one, two, then a center and one, two at the end, we need to have two more points. So we can delete this, but we start from the same position. Start, this is for the linear part. Now this is going to be for the arced part. And this then goes back for the linear part. Uh, I failed to press one time with the pencil. There, we do this again. There we are. Perfect. Cool. Okay. Now moving all these points it's actually very easy. We simply make sure they are vertically aligned and then I always select them and hand them and can move them around. It's pretty straightforward. Let me show you one way how to streamline this and make sure everything is perfect. As you saw, I drew 
a line at the center. And then I locked it. And then oh, now I can go ahead, select a pair of points, and then select the symmetry constraint. Select the center line again. And what this basically means is these points are now symmetrical aligned constraint. And when I move one point, the other point moves. Pretty good. Yeah? So you see now with this, um, we can easily style everything. Now keep in, keep in mind with the less, no, how should we say this best? With more points, we can sculpt this curve more into the shape of an arc. But this also means more work. And I find actually in industrial design surfacing, what's really important is to try to work with the least amount of points because it makes surfaces smoother and it's also less work. Also here we have a line which then goes into an arc. That's really, that's kind of like actually impossible to rebuild with an organic spline like this. So all we need to do is try to figure out where our um, parameters we have to meet and where can we be more flexible. So for example, at this starting points, it has to be exactly 16 or actually 20, millimeter, uh, 20 centimeters away from each other. Okay, and then the width should be 30. Here, you will see we run into the problem of, hmm, this gets close, but it's not on it. Let me show an interesting trick how we can make this work. Again, this is also because we work on the grid, very easy. So check this out. I draw here a line. This line, I make sure it's horizontal. This point I lock, and then this point I glue onto the curve or a spline. And then when I move this point, you see how I'm actually moving the CV point indirectly. And now I can snap this right onto the grid and that makes sure that this is perfectly sitting on the arc. Okay, you see, very good. A little bit more of extra styling. You can also go in if we want to, it's really for us to decide, but this is actually really good. Now, if I go into this view, you will see that this is open and I go back into the top view. I have to adjust here these points so they're centered. And then I will draw one more line connecting these, the start and end point. And now here I have a closed sketch. Now we do exactly the same. I extrude this up 20. And then I will hide this simply so it's easier to just select this uh, sketch profile, select this sketch down here as the path, and then we sweep it along. And I hide everything else, there we are. And this sketch I will call maybe refined profile. I just make up the names based on the flow of the project. So you can be very, um, yeah, make your own decisions. One really big suggestion, however, is give them meaningful names. Because later, if you come back a week later, two weeks later, it's nicer to see sketches that have a somewhat logical name compared to sketches that are named like sketch one, sketch two, sketch three, because you don't really know what's inside the sketch. Let's move everything a little bit onto the center of the screen. And we have our center and our swept volume, and we can do a subtract. Now here, one thing I would like to point out, I have the keep originals off. This is okay if you want to discard everything what you did. If you would like to, however, have a copy of your original building blocks, then select this. Or if you only want to have a copy of the tools or the swept surface, you can just say, keep the removed body. The main reason why this is useful is, if I show you what I have here, these are my building blocks. I can move these together, 
by dragging them onto each other and maybe call this raw building blocks. So whenever something goes wrong later, I have kind of like a frozen step of what I modeled before. This is faster than having to rebuild everything. If your model is rather simple, you might not have to do this. If your model, however, at one point gets very complicated, definitely something to consider about. So now here we have this half model. This is very good. We can then double select it or triple select it or triple select a face. So we select the whole body and then go to the mirror command, select an inner face here and with keep originals on, make a copy mirrored along the internal face, select both pieces by double tapping them, and then we go union. And I keep here also the keep originals off because I don't want that. Very good, look at that. Now we have a really nice smooth outside surface. So when I rotate my view, you can see this looks actually pretty, pretty good. This is a moment where we can throw onto the zebra command and then play with the different orientations. And here you can see how nice actually the transition is from this flatter area to the rounded part and then back here to the center part. And because everything was sketched from this side to this side being tangent, also there you see there's no break in the zebra between the left to the right side. Beautiful. Okay, so that basically means that later when this is being manufactured, and this is a glossy plastic and you would rotate it, you will see really nice highlights on it. Okay. Talking about highlights, also one thing in addition to the uh, zebra, we can also use for the moment the visualizer and put this onto it. And then when you rotate your view, you can see, oh, this looks actually really good. There you can see how it's a small highlight and then slowly the highlight gets much bigger. Then I go back and drag the default material over it because I do not want this material to be colorized. I just only used the visualizer as a temporary tool to verify the flow of a surface. So having this done for one moment, I would like to actually show you something since I brought this one up. I go back one time here to this step and then there we do a small um, draft like this. And in comparison, I think this is very interesting to see. So if I rotate the view now, ooh, um, well, we might not necessarily see this very good there, but there you can see how right there right now, this is black and this is grayish. So there's no smooth transition between them. And we turn this off and go also here to the visualizer and then rotate the view. This is something that's very common to do. There you can see, this is essentially, there is the rounded uh, corner vertical highlight. And at one point, instantly, there is this full reflection on the complete flat face. Because from here to here, there is no soft transition. Also here, when we rotate this at one point, it will instantly probably be on it. That's based on also how your object is rotated. But this is something where the visualizer can be very useful. Now here there we see this again instantly from the rounded part to the full body reflection. Okay, very good. So we verified that this actually looks pretty good. The outside is nice and smooth, nice transitions. Now it's time to take a look at the top part. I will organize everything here a little bit there. And now here we would like to create the interface for the delicious toast slices to go in. 
each opening is four by 15. So we can go to the top view. Then we have this face selected there. And we can have a finger double tap on it. Uh, that then actually moves the sketch plane right onto that top face. Here's my rectangle uh, tool of this sketching from the center and from the Y axis as sketch to the left or the right side. It's up to you. 15 by three. We can overwrite this to four. There we are. Beautiful. I will do the same somewhere here, just a little bit different because I would like to show you something, how we can now make sure everything is streamlined perfectly. This line and this line be the same. Okay, thank you. What about this line and this line be also the same? There, that is nice. I showed you before via the uh, axis, uh, sorry, not axis, the symmetry control, how we can select two points. Go symmetry. No? Um, this is definitely one way how you can do this. We can, just for the sake of demonstration, also select two vertical or horizontal edges or so, and then say, hey, be tangent. You said moved everything over. Now, because this line and this line is equal, when I make this one 12, you will see how the other rectangle grows or shrinks equally. So we not always need to have this symmetry command. We can also work just via tangencies. The only thing what, what here now is important to make sure is also, as you can see, I'm drawing here some, some guide elements, for example, for the distance. So this needs to go up one tick. There we are. These are removed again. I don't need those. They were more like a quick helper. Okay. Alternatively, just for the sake of showing each method, we can also keep this center line and then say U and U symmetry to this. The advantage of this approach is now, now I can move this as I want. You notice this rotating, so I will give all lines a double tap and then say horizontal vertical. And then I can specify the distance, two centimeters there. And then it moves each rectangle to a distance of two centimeters, but they have to be symmetrical along this line. So you see, there are many ways how you can do the same task, or you can use different steps to get to the same outcome. It's really up to you to decide. It's also good practice knowing if one way doesn't work, what's a different way how to do it? Okay, so the interface up here is planned out well, 16 by four, this is then what I decided on, and we can push these down. I will go by 12, nice and deep, very good. It's very tempting to go ahead and add many, many fillets at this point. I highly encourage you only to use fillets when necessary, particularly when they are a surface feature, like all these edges I'm selecting here, all these vertical edges, I will give a fillet of one because they define kind of like how this surface makes a transition to this surface. Okay, this edge and this edge, I will round later. I can, if I want, for the moment, play however with various sizes, just to get an idea. How does this look with a radius of one, with a radius of 0.5, okay. But fillets can slow down any model a lot. The more fillets, the more complicated the model. So if we need to do those, just for verifying an idea, we can always later select them and then we delete the fillet surface, and as you saw, we get back the original sharp edges. Welcome to the power of direct modeling in Shaper.
all gone. Very good. So this is some sort of a housing. And then this will be part of the interior uh, geometry that's also getting probably more hot. So there needs to be some sort of a separation. So I would like to have these two outer edges offset. I selected them both, go to offset. And I can play first. So this is a max of 2.5 centimeters. This is one centimeter, this is five millimeters, 1.5. So I can see to what degree can I do something. Okay, so we can study this. I don't have to hit enter yet and move around. So this is actually not really bad because when I'm looking at this so from here to here, how long is this? From here to here, or from there to there, how much distance do I have there? Uh, so one centimeter, okay, that it is. And then I select the outer edge one more time and I go 1.5, so a smaller gap, cool. And this smaller element here, I will bring down a little bit. So I extrude this uh, into the body by five, millimeters. Also here, the sketch I will call toaster slots and drag this down a little bit. Very good. Now, later I know, again, I can select these edges here and give those a fillet and then also these edges. But because we ha still have some work to do, I keep this out for the moment. We kind of like know that this is something we can do. We tested it. We have now to add here the interface for the slot. Okay, so how do we do this ideally? This is outside or on, on the right side. This is not right on the sketch plane. So there are various ways how we can do this. Something what I quite often do in such a case is I just go into their individual needed view for, for example, here the left view. And then I just draw here a sketch. So this is centered, very good. Now you see where this is and now I'll check this out. I go to transform, select the sketch on a rectangle and simply move it out. And then move it down. There we are and take a look at our object lister. Here's a new sketch. So you see I drew this first on the side profile sketch by moving it away, it created a new sketch entity. Now I can call this slot. There we are. Six centimeters yeah, is okay, maybe a little bit too wide. Here we can do um, four centimeters and check this out. We also have here this midpoint, which with which we can move around and drag something. You saw the moment I hit uh, this four centimeter and then okay, it, um, it moved the rectangle a little bit to the side. So we need to help the sketch a little bit to stay centered. So select the sketch, double tap, and this dragging sometimes works, not always works. What's then another really good way to do? Well, we can draw here a line, look at this. Or even from the bottom, I can draw a line. And then here I bring this to there. Try to make this really go onto the grid and snap. And then I lock that line and I lock this line. And this will be vertical. The rectangle, I give a horizontal vertical constraint too. And no, which is so nice, I can adjust the height. I can adjust the width. You see how this grows left and right equally. I can specify distances quite well. 
get an idea of how will this work? Will this work? Maybe at the bottom, it needs to be higher on top. This is okay. Good. Not too bad. So five centimeters and let's cut this in and see how far can we push this one in. So this is now where we will put the, the slot into that goes up and down. And we can also decide what type of geometry do we want, something that goes um, kind of like with this linear look like this, something that will be more rounded. So it's more kind of like, while this is a kind of like a flat cut from the top, this will be more circular. This is really up to you to decide. But also here, I would highly suggest be, be playful, for example. So we have this really nice outer surface we sculpted. Let me show you an interesting trick. So here I have this piece. No? Okay, so I will do an extrude. Extrude this one up by 1.5 centimeters. And there, here I say new body. So you can see that the bottom edge lines up perfectly. And here I have a slot now, it's like a cube, but it has this beautiful other kind of like curved edge. And here what happens, as you can see, is when I bring this up and down, how this slides in. This is one very easy way how you can explore styling of such elements. I can select this face and then I select this face as a target and say replace face. Okay, look what happened. It folded the, the more vertical arc surface to be totally flush with this. Oh, how beautiful this looks. Okay. Nice. So now from the side, we can take a look at how this could work. We push this totally at the bottom and here totally on, on top, how this goes up. Okay. Because if, if the piece is at the bottom, it might go in, there will be an auto, like some sort of an automatic shut off or when a certain time or uh, heat temperature of the toast uh, is found, so it goes up. At the same time, when we loaded the toaster, we need to have something to press onto. Now the question is, if we take a look at the top, is this however sufficient? So I can click on this top face and with a finger double tap. And then here I draw a line. So 1.5 plus minus centimeters. Now this is something now I can think about, mm, is this actually enough? Does this work? We can select this face, extend it half a centimeter. Okay. So when this line was one point plus minus five, then now this would be yeah, close to two centimeters. So it's a little bit bigger. Obviously, however, that means when we bring this down, it does not fully line up there anymore. Okay, now, so the question now here is, and also what I tried to show you, was this a good idea, how to start? Sometimes you, you have an idea and you explore with it, and then either it can work out or it cannot work out. It's also a matter of um, personal preference. Do you want this level to be kind of very noticeable or would you like to hide this a little bit more? So we can continue working with that level or um, something what I will do, I will simply make the call that this was not a bad idea, but um, no, I actually, I will decide, I rather would like to have something that's rounder because there's another interesting surfacing technique I could show you now. You see, I have this face selected. And when I select this, we have a height of 14 
centimeters, by the way. So you see how I measured the, the height that's inside. I will click on add plane and I will move this one up to 12 centimeters. Okay, very good. So on this plane, I will select and double tap. There I will create a new sketch and I turned on this section view here. With the section view right on top of this uh, sketch plane, you can see now how this slices through the whole model. It's actually very useful to, to work this way. And now I can explore, will a circle work? I use a circle on purpose because left and right, it is not as wide. It doesn't have sharp edges, but it has a thicker center part where I have enough surface for my finger to go onto. Okay, so maybe this circle actually could work out. Very nice. Let's give the circle a little bit of material thickness, 1.5 centimeters again. And then I can move this one down at the bottom, plus minus. It does not have to be super precise. I'm more trying to explore where does this end. Okay, good. Yeah, let's say we will go with that way. So I will undo my movement of the um, cylindrical part, go back to the sketch, turn on my section view, um, I will lock the circle center and also lock the radius. While actually 2.4, what about two centimeters? This is two centimeters is not enough. 2.1, 2.2 is maybe a, uh, this might be better. 2.4 seem to be too tight. 2.2, 2.3. Very good, because now I can imagine the how much space I will have from here to there, to that surface. So this, I will make, look at this, a tick smaller and now my cylinder fits the circle. We go back to that sketch because I locked everything and I mentioned everything. And I will draw here and there and there a rectangle, draw a line. This line I will lock. The line is also sketched already horizontal. So I don't have to add a horizontal constraint. But here, as you see, I add the horizontal constraints to these three lines. And now I can dimension this. Two centimeters is too much. A centimeter is actually a lot. Half a centimeter. Properly will work. I will go back to one centimeter simply to make this a little bit thickness wise more significant. And then this I will add to this button. You saw I turned off the toaster and this I will extrude down and add to it. There. And these two pieces I join. Very nice. Now, when this is a nice button on top, we would like to touch. Maybe this edge is what we want to make rounder. There are various ways how to do this. This is probably the easiest way down here. This edge we can keep straight. If this is something that should be round two, then we would need to pre-fill it this, and then we can round this. So. Or we do it this way, yeah. But you can see there are then limits to the amount of the fillet. So 0.5 is kind of like the max because then there, this connects already. Here maybe 0.1 just for the bottom, very good. This now I will call slot. There we are. This I will call Toaster. There we are. That's actually quite nice. 
Now the slot right now is inside the toaster body. That's logically not very um, useful. So what we will do is I will select all this. And so this is the max height and start cutting a slot down. Go to 11. Also here, one of the nice things of Shaper again is I can measure distances. So this has one centimeter of a distance. I can also go to here and say, what's this distance? Two centimeters. Okay, good. Then this, I will move up by one centimeter. So now this is unified. This level here, I can give a name, this plane I can keep, or I can delete this plane. It's not really needed anymore because the sketch itself has a filled profile, which I can with a finger double tap to always go back to that sketch. There, and we can hide those elements. And you see slowly actually our design gets increasingly more interesting. We want to work a little bit more on the opening for that level because the level is nice and round, also has a beautiful transition to the back, but the rest in the surrounding is not really very impressive. So let's explore styling this a little bit. Here again, I'm doing just a preliminary um, rounding of some edges to see how they can, this can work out. If I push this, then this goes in. You will see up there, we will run into the problem that this at one point will grow into that surface. So there are limits to it. But when, uh, everything there is so nice and round. Why should this be flat? So let's undo everything one more time. Now again, this is actually why, why I say be really careful about how much we have to round everything all the time. Because I would like to show you something. It's actually a really fun technique in this model. So from this face to this face, and I will hide the slot, I would like to have a loft surface and check out what we will do. So I will select this uh, face, double tap, section view. And here is my spline control and I start drawing and click and click. The spline, as you can see, has however the problem of that I need to push this one back here. So maybe instead of this, the spline control point, I will use this time now the fit point. So this sketch I will delete one more time. So I can draw this clean. There we are. This here I want to delete anyway. Look at this. There. Okay. So, well, not too bad. So then we can go to here, select this face, finger double tap and section view, we do the same. Draw, push and draw. Another fit point. Uh, might actually select the torso geometry there. Yeah, there, I just wanna get rid of that part. There we are, very good. So what can we do now? First, because the fit points were a uh, corner, center point corner, you see I get actually these beautiful corner segments and I can loft them. Uh, but the loft does not follow this edge there. Hmm, that's not what I want. So check this out. You, by you, loft along this rail and this curved edge. Do a loft. Look at this, no? beautiful. So we do the same here to there, both profiles selected. 
rail, rail, and loft. And also here, now we need to be able to, to cut something out. So I will do actually this little trick. I selected the vertical face of the slot, extrude something out as a new body. So I can simply say from you to you, to you, now subtract this one from it. Um, plus, so this is my minus, keep nothing. There we are. Now look at this. Pretty nice, no? Yeah, I think so too. So here now I will start fusing these pieces together. Now I'm going to manipulate this geometry there a lot. So in this case, I make a union and say keep original on. And now I only need to figure out who is who. So these two will go into the building block. And here, toaster, that's also the raw old piece. You saw the two pieces came back. They were still actually selected. This is why they showed up again. Oh, and look at this nice cleaned up face. So the slot will also perfectly fit in. So when I go into this and um, double tap, section view there you can see there is enough space and when from this view now i move this one down i have to make sure that obviously this will happen the same way and there you see there we run into a tiny issue there's a little bit of intersection happening so and this is basically the meaning why why i say so often have previous models left so this was actually maybe a good idea it just doesn't it does not work as much so but because we have these copies here left it's not a big deal so you we make a copy and this copy i move out of this group there we are and there is that very good so the thing is the top sketch is good the bottom sketch however is not so good so what can we do here i'm probably will have to modify this a little bit i will hide the toaster so there we are then i'll go to the bottom view select the sketch double tap and there i can see now there, there are the problems so because this is a fit point curve i can select the handle and push this out a little bit and there we are very good so now this does not intersect anymore now i can go ahead now and do exactly the same thing what i did there before so you saw we identified this problem and it didn't really take much time to fix that problem again because we had copies before if you're really good at modeling maybe these copies you don't need but who knows i think it's always better safe to be sorry So here I do this cut again. There we are. None. Thank you. And actually, um, no, I will not move those. I will do this with a union, but yeah, keep the original on. There we are. Just need to figure out which one is which one. So these two, they go into the building block there. I actually now start having also the previous elements too. So there are the, the new ones in addition. It's up to you if you want to keep those or not. It's also for documentation purpose, maybe nice to have some of your elements or steps you did instead of throwing everything away. And then look at this. 
Now we start rounding this part, 0.5, not too much. And round this one, 0.5, very good. And then we can round this edge, 0.5 or 0.25, based on how you would like to have your system set up. There is the slot, beautiful, and then uh, the slot can go up and down. I would like to to line this one up. So I will, you see, I selected the, the object and the align command, and then I do with an align command, uh, there, I line it up to this lower edge, perfect. So knowing that this edge here is 10 centimeters and this whole object is 1.5, if this should go up to the bottom, this can only go up 8.5 centimeters and then it would sit right under it. Minus, yeah, well, I can just keep it there. Very good, yeah. Beautiful. In addition, if we want, we can continue also rounding these edges to give this a little bit more of um, a finished detail. Here too. So what I'm doing here right now, this is kind of like, again, something that you will do when your design really is, is somewhat finished. And need to make sure that whatever we do is consistent. So this has to be 0.252. So it matches this lower fillet, otherwise they will collide. Okay, good. This one here is bigger, so it doesn't collide with it anyway. Very nice. So let's say the the main design of the, the body is, is good. We can then go ahead and decide very nice. 0.25 for those. 0.25 for this one too. Is this good? Or would we like this to be bigger? Again, this is for you to, to decide. I will prefer smaller edges. Or I will try this out. Now, 0.5 for the outside. 2.5 for the inside, and then here, these, I will make 0.5 again. Uh, big slots and rounded soft edges for the toast to uh, go in. Very good. You saw how I selected the inside face or top face and then went to the move command and moved this five millimeter up. This is another very interesting technique because now I can style a little bit more. Also from the side, is there any type of stepping? So it's not perfectly flush. Also, in case you don't like something, now we can adjust these radii. First, my idea sounded very good, but then afterwards, taking a look at it, I felt, nope, they are too big. This is better. Okay, good. Here we can do a nice point, uh, point 0.5 for the fillet. We will have, let's say, two, four, four feet. Okay, this is flush on the ground, so this can't really work. Um, we can, when this is 0 0.25, half a centimeter for the feet, so we need to move this one up half a centimeter. So that means this will be 19.75. There we are, beautiful. Okay, so how do we do the, um, the circular feet? That's easy, let me show you something. We make those as like nice domes. So sketch from the side, we have nothing there yet. Center line, 
horizontal line, another horizontal line, double tap, uh, select all horizontal vertical, the center one I'd lock, 1.6, okay, we can work with an arc. So this arc goes to there and then the arc to this line tangent. That's the reason why I drew this line here. And then we can push this one out and decide um, how big should this one be. Two centimeters in the model, yeah. This is going to be a really wide piece. So 1.5, because it's this is just a radius, the diameter would be then three centimeters. So this I will now revolve. Okay. So here's the interesting step now. No, um, I keep the sketch where it is, but I move this piece now to a position where I might like it. Okay, good. And I'm really focusing only on this quarter piece to get the other positions. Then I will use the mirror command with the object selected, go to a side view, keep originals on, and then I simply tap on the grid. <laughs> Look at that, and there's the other piece. And then I can do the same now from the different view. This is how, how fluid modeling in Shaper works. We do the mirroring just simply across the grid too. Yeah, so there are four small silicone yeah, feet, very easy, that will work well. They're kind of hidden there enough to make sure that this one does not slide off, let's say a, a marble countertop. Very nice. Okay, so one thing is left, maybe a dial or, or a push button, a cancel button. So let me show you now in this last piece how we can design this on this uh, front face. So I will select here this face because it is vertical and do an offset plane. And there's my offset plane, very good. There we are. And on this construction plane, I will project these edges here. So I select all those edges, select the construction plane, and then say project. And okay, there we are. That's very useful because now I can select the construction plane with a finger double tap. And there we are. You see where it is. And I have a reference now. So I can go ahead and say, good. So using the line command, I draw here a line down and a line over and a line up, a line over, a line down, a line over and there and there. I will do the same trick here again. There's the midpoint. I just did this on purpose. Let's make this a little bit off center. This point I make a line to the grid and horizontal vertical. All this horizontal vertical. Look at this. You and you, check this out. I make equal. And now I have a super easy symmetry tool. You see how this works. All this I want to lock to make sure this is um, not moving. Half a centimeter of a distance. Uh, this might actually, uh, this is a curve. Whatever message did we get? Oh, there we are, very good. There, now nicely. Here it gets a little bit tighter. So this is a, a design decision we need to make. Is this okay? This is not really much. So it's 0 0.05 millimeter. Okay, we could add this one here uh, to give this 0 0.55. So it will be a little bit wider on top, but at least here at the bottom, this will be all uniform. Maybe this is this is better. Also here we have this arc. Um, we need later 
to have an arc to this point too. But I will do this actually not now, later. This and this I would like also to be at the same level. Now this is a projected edge, turns out into a curve. Let's see, can we do this tangent? And look at this, it does. So now these edges are aligned too. This is uniform. What's the distance here? I can clean this up, two centimeters. Okay. What is this? Three, very nice. So check this out. You see, this is actually nice and easy rectangular. I do not have any rounded edges on it because when I extrude this one like this, I can actually round these edges 0.5. I can round this edge, 0.5, okay. This sketch I will hide for right now. This construction plane we can delete. This whole piece I will move to here for a second and I will explain right now why, because now I make this face fold, follow over this face with the project uh, sorry, the replace phase command. See that? Beautiful. Now I can see exactly, oh, this is actually too small. This has to be bigger. So when this is 0.5, this is a 0.5 distance. That radius has to be one centimeter. So there we are. You see how easy that is. I find this process actually much easier than dealing with sketches and adding all the sketches in there. This way I can kind of like see how this would look just via geometry. Also from the side, how will this look? Okay, well, not too bad. The bottom, hmm, this is too, too tight there. So, okay, you will go up by a little bit. Uh, this is still still okay. So 0.251, yeah, um, I guess I did calculate the radius incorrectly. So it's 0 1.25, I think. Yeah, there we are. Also, you see, adjusting these radii on geometry is super easy. Doing this in a sketch is really complicated. I mean, you can do it. It's just labor intensive. And I find, particularly in modeling, we would like to do things which are easier. Very good. Now, what we can do now in addition is simply the, the following. Uh, this. I will move in to the moment, so I do not see this anywhere. So I will just keep it there for the moment. Very good, okay. We'll come back to that. Because uh, essentially at one point we can ask ourselves, do we project actually these edges onto the surface to slice it, or do we even use this to cut grooves into that volume to to simulate another material piece that's kind of like a sheet of metal or plastic or something that's being pushed into the cavity. Again, this is something we can do when really it makes sense. For the moment, I would like to explore the interface of these buttons. That is more important. Then later I can come back and revisit this position. So we would like to quickly create a button. I go to top view and can draw a line and maybe draw a line this way. And you see what I'm trying to do is kind of like figure out where might they be a midpoint. So this I will put onto this line, make this 
perpendicular. And you see when I move this around or based on how the sketch engine will adjust this there, I can get this really close, lock it, unlock this, bring this really close, lock it. So now we can see kind of like where's the midpoint. Yeah. Uh, and um, yeah, would this really work out? Because placing something that is perpendicular on a curved surface can sometimes be a little bit uh, difficult or more tricky. So um, I will do one quick check. Is this actually on an element? It is. So you see this is actually on the ground sketch. Also our list here already started getting much longer. So I will move this one up a little bit to there. Okay. Like this. And then along this line, I would like to create a construction plane. So I select nothing, add construction plane. And I will select through edge at an angle. And this will be zero degrees. Very good. Now on this, I can double tap. I made this construction plane, so I have something to snap to. Here's still my, my initial design. I can kind of lock this so it does not move. This line I can delete. I draw a new line. I make this line perpendicular. Another line here, perpendicular to. I don't really know how big everything will be. Half a centimeter, very nice. And this should be an arc. So there's our arc. This arc will be tangent. You see, I moved the center point of the arc onto this line. So now where this line hits here is perpendicular, aka it will go tangent to the opposite side. This is really useful because what I can do now is the following. I can do a quick revolve and then see, oh, it's just too big, too small. What's the radius? Let's clean this up, 1.25. So you see, I'm not really working with the sketch much. I find sometimes these details are difficult to do via sketch. So I will do this rather with uh, a little bit of geometry. Okay, very good. I can still, however, project this back into that sketch. Now, as a sketch, yes, please, because when I hide this, you see there is this line. So when I go back to the sketch, you see uh, I have the line here. So this actually is the same, so I can connect this. Very good, thank you. And the main reason why I did this, look at this kind of nice trick what I'm going to do. You see how this is still lining up with that. So what I will do is I will extrude this one up nicely, way bigger. Yeah, okay, thank you. I will do a mirror there. I will fuse those together. Then this, um, this will be 1.95. Oh, looks like I have the original still there. Okay, so from there, to there, we have a distance of half a centimeter. This might be a little bit too much. So, but who knows? Let's see. So, you um, mirrored along this. There we are. Very good. And here it is. So, you see, from this, I will remove these two and subtract there. So now there we can see, wow, well, this is way too thick, but now we can say good half a centimeter we would like to remove. So 0.75. Based on how good, you, how good you are in doing math in your head, you can change the way how you, you do this. And I found this easier 
I make the mirrors, make a cut, and then you saw uh, I remove the material afterwards. Okay, so this button I move back minus 0.25 millimeters. Centimeters, sorry, so 2.5 millimeters. Very good. Yeah, this feels actually nicely centered. This is not too bad. So maybe two more round buttons there. What is the radius uh, we have? So 2.5. Okay, so I need I need um, a vertical sketch there now. So on I could actually on this face make a construction plane. There we are. I don't really do an offset. I simply use the face as a alignment. You see where it is. There we are. Finger double tap on that construction plane. There we are. And then say one and two. Okay. But how do we figure out the positioning in the center nicely? Again, here, these edges, we project into there. Yep, now you see that. Because with that, I can select those and make them locked. One point, one point two five, and here we do this equal, so they're exactly the same. What's the distance? Uh, let's see if I draw here a line of three, three, four, three, five plus minus something. Okay. We can do an interesting trick here. We do an offset of this and I'm using down here this as a center for it. So 1.7. I do here 1.7. Oh, look at that. Yeah. It's really, really close how they're they're overlapping there, no? So we can clean this up or keep them the way how they, they are. But the main reason why I did this is, you see, I can drag the circles onto this center offset line or curve I created. And um, I locked it so I can slide those around easily. Yeah, then we can figure out what is the distance between them, three centimeters. Uh, here, this I will, I would like to hide this object there. So I will need to understand where is on the sketch this centerpiece. Uh, so you see down there, I have this element. So here, I just transferred this point over on the sketch. So it's right at the center of this axis. So that's the reason why I did this. Because now inside this sketch, I can now say you to you. Now three there. So they're all kind of like, along vertically more or less well spaced out. Very good. We have a lot of elements here. So all this, I can select. This basically defines everything that defines the buttons. So why not put those into a new folder? They're cleaned up. called it button construction there. Then um, here is another element. Where is this sketch? Is this this one? Yes, so this we bring over. There we are. This will be our dial. This is the slot piece. These are actually the feet. See how I'm grouping everything. And this then really makes um, navigating your, your outliner so much easier.
little bit of cleanup work and then we're good. This I can delete, I don't need this anymore. Here I do the following, because now we are getting close to our final uh, process. So, okay, so this is beautiful. Thank you. And then you, onto you. Hold on, actually, I will do it this way. Also here, I will move these out. I find this a little bit easier for you to see where the other face then is when I extrude through the part, replace and replace one more time. Okay, so they're flush. Now, this whole body here, I will make a copy because we're finishing this now. So where is actually the, there's that. So this will be, um, this is actually for the slot cutter. This is our toaster piece. Uh, very good. So um, we need now to do the following. So. This I will offset by 0.1 millimeter. Actually, sorry, let me go back one time to make this easier to see. I just go by one centimeter. And then this face I will fold onto that face. Okay. So the reason why, this is actually another trick. This here, I will go inwards now by two millimeters. This is going to be the material thickness. Mm -hmm. And then this, I will fold back over this surface. Look at that, <laughs> we actually have a compound curve of offset thickness piece that can be pushed into it. We also have all these buttons here. So here we can do something really fun now. First, we want to use this and remove that from the toaster. Uh, so this means toaster. Mm minus, now we can use this toaster, minus this one, subtract. In our case, we want, however, to keep the removed body. That's our tool. We still need to keep it. There you see, the slot is gone. These elements here in the back, obviously, they are not um, complicated. They have um, kind of like the same material thickness. So this one here, I will make a little bit thicker because they, they will be on an axis to rotate, but the outside is kind of important for the push and pull and press. And this one has to, to rotate. So we have this piece. This is actually our original toaster. Here is the slot element. So from this slot, if I want, I can do two cuts, three cuts and cut these holes. Um, I would like to explain something also. That's the reason why I made two toaster objects. Here's this piece. This is the other toaster. I was planning removing the, um, instead of removing, actually doing the, the difference. So I could maybe show this as an alternative process. So here's this. So again, you see um, original toaster, the slot piece. So you and you intersect. And if I do this, and then we have this piece left which then perfectly fits in there. Or as you saw 
with the cutting tool, I adjusted the surfaces, used a cutting tool to remove the space, and then I do not need to make two different toaster elements. So here, this we really now can call toaster main, and this is actually called, uh, let's say, interface shield. And from this interface shield, we will remove all this, but keep our bodies because we only want to cut the holes there. Yeah, very good. Last task, detailing. Sharp edges are not very nice, so we will go with really thin edges, uh, fillets. So this is good, very nice. So this I can hide, point 0.1, the same. And then the rest. So here we say point 0.1. No, this and this much bigger, point 0.25. And then these point 0.1. And then if we do an overlay all together, look how beautiful this looks. Now you can understand with more work uh, added to it, we can detail this more, but we can get a really good idea of that this dial can be rotated. These are push buttons. And this is a, um, a level that's being pushed up and down. To bring this now to an end, I would like to show you how we can quickly create an interesting structure here on top. And this will be a perfect way also to demonstrate how strong modeling is in Shaper. So I went to a side view, make a sketch, just a circle, and the radius I will specify to 0.2. So I have a four millimeter diameter. Can move this to somewhere here. There we are. Very nice. Okay, good. Now this whole piece I will push out, but I will make this as a new body. 1.5. Okay, three centimeters. Then the edges I will round. Point two because this is a point four um, diameter, so point two for the radius. Very good. And go to the top view there. Bring this over. Slide this in. Very nice. And I do this more visually. So you see how I lined or aligned this one right there with the, uh, the center edge. Okay, so I will now bring this over by 0.2. So two millimeters in double tap, copy 0.4. Okay, 0.2. So two millimeter there in between. You so this basically that means 0.6. Okay, and I can another 0.6. And the back, I don't really need to because my thumb doesn't really reach that area. So check this out now. I can select this and with the move command, get this a little bit closer, 0 0.05. Okay, that means here, you, I can bring also 0 0.05. This goes back in 0.6. Very good. That means then here I do the same. This is then 0.25 and 
this will point to. This was easy. So then this will be SV now point 0.2 and this will be minus 0.25. Very good. So here's the really nice thing about it. I can select all this, double tapping, double tap, make join, keep original off. So we have this added to it and look at this. Just so you know, I can select these three faces here, go to move, I can move this around and readjust this, but I can also make a copy and <laughs> make a copy and reposition it. Isn't that beautiful? So um, I do not want this later, I can delete it. This is actually really fantastic how flexible this actually can work in Shaper to um, add, uh, kind of like duplicate a surface feature and add it, add it automatically to it and then move it to a position to the back. Very good. So this basically concludes everything what I wanted to show in this more detailed video about how to surface and model a toaster. I clean all this a little bit up. Again, never forget about naming your objects. And if we rotate around, now we can say this actually looks pretty, pretty nice. We can add one more button here. We can add something there, company logo, text, and, and whatnot. And you see with, with more details added, even a, a rather simplistic looking shape becomes more interesting. But these things take time, which as you know, can understand why from the beginning of the video, I showed a rather very basic approach to very slowly explore the overall proportions before we then really go ahead and start adding all these details. And that's it.